the, you probably do remember this, but you were one of, uh, well, you were one of the roster, um, I guess, uh, additions or the stars that the GM of Stevie Knight, he recruited to be on heat. And remember, I ran to the ring like a maniac and kissed you both like you the French thing on the cheeks and then just ran off into the sunset. Dude, I remember I remember you telling me this story like you had dubbed yourself the G, a GM of, of, of Stevie Knight heat. Right. Mm -hmm. And then didn't Stephanie come up to you one time and said, when have, when did you become the GM of Stevie of Sunday Night Heat? It it's like, actually one of the it's one of uh, my favorite things that ever happened in my career that people don't know about because like urban legend like you said i heard that you didn't they didn't even know we you know it used to be when you were on sunday night heat everybody treated it like it was a chore they would go out there with some people would have boo-boo faces on when they would go out and have a sunday night heat match mm -hmm. so i i knew that i needed since i was always on heat i needed to do something different so why not act like I actually wanted to be there and act like I thought I bought the show to act like I was the GM act like coach and Al were my employees. And we even did angles where I would get mad at people like gold dust for being insubordinate employees to me on, on Stevie night heat. The, the, the thing that people don't know is that the production people coach Al snow, the guys like spike and, and you know, you and uh, Sylvan and everybody, was in on the supposed rib that it was underground. We were producing the show and vignettes, backstage promos, making matches. They weren't even having matches. We would just, and if they made the match, we would make an angle, do a promo or some kind of angle off it, yeah. and they would run with it. And then Coach and Al would secretly get these production guys to get in on it. They would throw the pre-tapes up. We would have all this stuff that Stephanie, Johnny Ace, Vince, anybody in power jr when he was there at the time nobody knew this was going on until seven months into it. <laughs> seven months i'm not even i'm not you know wrestlers lie and all that stuff. i'm not even if i, I might be eight months i might be understating it wow. and the, the way they found out was by the way i'm walking around with tights that say stevie knight heat on them <laughs> with the with the heat logo richie and magic is making a stevie knight heat championship based on the wing the eagle belt I'm making wow. a belt where I will defend it and Spike will just beat me for it right off the bat on, on Stevie Night Heat. But we were in, this is when Coach and Al were doing the, the commentator angle against Lawler and JR and they won the right to commentate Raw. Yeah. So we were, Victoria and myself were afraid. We didn't have a lot of money with, with Heat. So we actually baked them pots. And I had a chef hat on and an apron that said, kiss the GM. Victoria had store bought supermarket pies, but we were telling them we baked them ourselves. And this is when Johnny Ace walked in and thought it was great. He kind of knew. Stephanie walked in and said, Johnny, when did Stevie become the GM of Heat? And he goes, Oh, Stephanie, I had no idea about any of it. No, Stevie, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> you know? Yeah, pure, the, the, the pure Johnny Ace. Yeah. Right on their bus, which I loved actually for that situation. And then they came back to me after they stopped and took me off TV. Two months later, Stephanie goes, we have a great idea. We're going to make you the GM of Sunday Night Heat. And we're going to call it Stevie Night Heat. And I said, you know what? That's a great idea. And <laughs> Maybe fights. <laughs> just in case you came up with this idea, like I was so sarcastic, and she thought I was like just being so grateful. Right. But that sounds about accurate for for the environment, right, Bernie? That dude, you hit the nail on the head. So for the fans who wonder what it's like, he just that to a T. That's yeah. <laughs> it's it's Dang. funny. It's so you just have to laugh at it. You have to roll with it. And then, you know, someday you'll be on a podcast 10, 15 years from now, and everybody will be laughing about it. It's right. all good. It's all, yeah.